हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लासेस वी वर डीलिंग विद द टॉपिक ऑफ सेमीकंडक्टर डिवाइसेस अंडर विच वी स्टडीड अबाउट द पी एन जंक्शन इन इक्विलिब्रियम एंड इट्स रिलेटेड पैरामीटर्स विद एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड मैथमेटिकल फ्रेमवर्क एंड टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक where we will study about the p n junction in non equilibrium p is a p type semiconductor and n is a n type semiconductor how p n junction is formed that is also understood details about depletion region is also over thus i can assume that the concept of p n junction is clear to all of you and the second part in this heading is non equilibrium we know that equilibrium means balancing state non equilibrium means something is imbalanced in semiconductor devices if we have to fabricate any device main parameter we look for is its conductivity depending on the application we try to tune the conductivity and the conductivity depends on the number of charge carriers that is carrier concentration in semiconductors both electrons and holes are the carriers so when we say non equilibrium we can say that there is change in the number of charge carriers it is not remaining constant as in the case of previous classes so under this heading we are going to study about generation and recombination currents second is the continuity equations moving to the current voltage relation that is iv characteristics we can say finally deriving the rectifier equation and saturation current so fundamental theoretical part covered under this topic are these one and based on these information we can go for device fabrication where we will study about different types of semiconductor devices like photocell leds etc let us start our today's class which is mainly on generation and recombination currents to understand about these we first should know about what is generation as i already told carriers in semiconductors are electrons and hole and how these are produced is nothing but generation of carriers flow of carriers is nothing but current so the corresponding current is called as generation current moving to the recombination combination is nothing but combining or uniting so the carriers that is electron and hole they are going to combine back and become stable which is recombination and the current corresponding to that is called as recombination current so let us find out how this generation or recombination is going to take place what are the steps which are involved in these two processes as such carrier generation and recombination processes are the fundamental for the operation of many opto electronic devices mainly semiconductor devices example is led laser diode etc so if we want to classify we can classify two types of processes in semiconductors one is generation and another one is recombination from the word itself we can understand that generation is creation of mobile charge carriers but how this is going to take place in short we can say that carrier generation is a process by which electrons in the valence band gain energy and move from the valence band to the conduction band which in return will produce two mobile carriers one is hole in the valence band and electron in the conduction band and second one is recombination where there is elimination of charge carriers so similarly we can say carrier recombination is a process by which a conduction band electron will lose its energy 
and reoccupy the energy state of an electron hole in the valence band. So the free electron and hole will not remain mobile any further. So we can say it is destroying or elimination of charge carriers in semiconductors. But next question arises how the electrons will gain energy or lose energy? What is the stimulus which is going to trigger this generation and recombination? Thus the next question will be how does recombination and generation occur? Mainly we can say these two processes can occur both optically as well as thermally in semiconductor. Optical means through light where photons are involved, thermally means through heat where phonons are involved. Here we can observe that there is an energy level diagram, lower energy state represents the valence band and higher energy states represent conduction band. In valence band electrons are there when photons are incident which is having energy greater than that of energy gap of the semiconductor that energy is absorbed by the electron present in the valence band which will get excited to the higher energy level that is conduction band creating an electron in the conduction band and leaving back a hole in the valence band. So these two will be the mobile charge carriers. So carriers are created here and this is due to photons whereas high energy particles we can say phonons are involved both the time there is gain in energy and excitation and when we need to study about the corresponding currents some important points we need to note down when we say a material is at thermal equilibrium it means that the generation and recombination rate are balanced means with respect to time the number of charge carriers which are produced is equal to the number of charge carriers which are recombined. So there is a balancing condition which means there is no excess of charge carriers. Thus we can say they are balanced so that the net charge carrier density remains constant and that constant we get from law of mass action that is the product of electron hole densities are constant n is the charge carrier density for electrons p is for holes which will be equal to ni square where ni is the carrier concentration for intrinsic semiconductor and this is the equilibrium condition but we want to study about non equilibrium means when there are some extra carriers we say that these rates are not balanced. So there are two chances. First one is the rate of recombination becomes greater than that of a rate of generation which will drive the system back to equilibrium. So finally whenever there is a non-equilibrium state it tries to bring back the system to equilibrium. Thus when there are extra carriers n into b is greater than ni square where the rate of recombination will be greater than rate of generation and likewise the second will be when there is deficit of carriers that is n into p is less than ni square in this case the generation rate becomes greater than the recombination rate but again it is trying to drive back the system towards equilibrium. So one is for equilibrium state and two are for non-equilibrium state depending on the number of carriers. After key points let us move on to the working. How this process is going to take place. First our concentration will be on generation. We know that in valence band holes and electrons are bonded. And if heat is given or temperature is increased or photons are incident on it then their bond is going to break and electrons will get excited to the conduction band 
leaving back the hole in the valence band. So clearly you can observe how generation is going to take place. When energy is given, the electron present in the valence band will hike up or excite to the conduction band only when the energy supplied is greater than that of the energy gap. So here one electron and here one hole is created. Then with respect to time we can explain the rate. The rate at which the electrons and holes are generated is called as the generation rate and here the generation rate of electron and generation rate of hole are going to be equal because only when electron is created it is going to leave back a hole. So if one electron from valence band is excited to the conduction band it means one free electron is created and one free hole is created. So as these are simultaneous processes we can say that generation rate of electron and generation rate of hole are equal so in general we can write it as G. So this is about generation or generation rate and then moving to the recombination or recombination rate here it is reverse process of that of generation. Here the excited electron which is present in the conduction band due to generation is going to lose energy and that electron comes back to its ground state which means de-excitation takes place where already one hole is present and that de-excited electron will recombine with the hole present in the valence band forming a bond. So if generation is upward process, recombination is a downward process. Both the cases energy is involved, in generation energy is absorbed, in recombination energy is evolved. Here charge carriers are created whereas here charge carriers are eliminated because here there is bond breaking, here there is bond formation. So as such these differences if you keep in your mind easily recombination and generation can be understood and recollected. And in the same manner we can say that the rate of recombination of electron is equal to rate of recombination of hole which can be written as total rate of recombination. So I hope how the bond breaking or bond formation or how this generation and recombination process takes place is clear. Remember annihilation is nothing but elimination or destruction. It is not going to destroy the electron or a hole but those electrons and hole are not going to remain free. So if they are not free to move means they are not mobile charge carriers they won't contribute for conductivity. That's why we say it is a destruction of electron or hole. So if you keenly observe these things we are just concentrating on free charge carriers and not the bonded one because bonded electrons or holes are not going to contribute for conductivity. So they will not be called as a carrier as they cannot conduct and if they are not conducting means they are not having as such contribution for device fabrication and our main stress is on semiconductor devices which means we deal with the charge carriers means the free electron and the hole. So after working let us move on to the current corresponding to generation and recombination. What is the most fundamental equation? As such we know that the rate at which recombination occurs is given by Rn is equals to delta n by tau n. Rn is the recombination rate whereas delta n is the excess electrons per unit volume. So you can say excess electron divided by volume. Tau n is the lifetime of electron. When you divide these two you get recombination rate. In the same manner you can write 
what is the recombination rate for holes instead of n write it as p n represents electrons p represent holes so rp will be equal to delta p by tau p for holes where delta p is the excess number of holes per unit volume and tau p is the lifetime of an hole we know that here generation rate and recombination rate will be equal to each other so we can write g is equals to r where g is the generation rate r is the total recombination rate thus the current corresponding to it that is the recombination current for electrons is given by q by t that is the general equation q is the charge divided by time with respect to time how much charges are going to flow that is flow of charges is going to be current thus we can say recombination current for electrons is equals to axis number of electrons into its charge will give you the total charge q and t is nothing but time but here time is with respect to the lifetime so we can write it as tau n if i say axis number of electron it just means that with respect to the given volume how many number of electrons are present so instead of writing axis electron i can write delta n into volume delta n is axis electrons per unit volume multiply by volume you get just axis electrons because volume and volume get cancelled so instead of writing axis electron we replace it by delta n into volume and from these above equation we can write delta n by tau n is nothing but rn that is the recombination rate and this is the formula for recombination current for electrons which is equals to recombination rate into volume into charge of electron and the unit will be same as that of current that is coulomb per second or amperes so this is just for electrons similarly you can write for holes also recombination current for holes will be equal to rp into volume into e as we have derived recombination and also we know that r is equals to g so we can derive what is generation current similarly electron generation current will be equal to gn v into e where gn is rate of generation of electrons and for hole generation current for holes is equals to gp into volume into charge of electron we are writing e only in both the side because we know that the charge of electron as well as hole is going to remain same so replacing r by g gives the generation current corresponding to electron and hole as both the rates are equal to each other remember that here we have not considered any extra parameters like doping so we can say generation rate is equals to recombination rate or else as such there are different types of recombination methods like band to band recombination or trap assisted recombination or even auger recombination so these are different types of recombination processes where there is direct or indirect like trap assisted recombination will take place so what we have discussed today it is the most fundamental kind of generation and recombination if you want more details about different types of recombination then you can suggest the same in the comment section given below so this is it about today's class about recombination and generation currents and in our next class we will deal with the continuity equations which explains about the flow of carriers so mathematical framework for the flow of carriers will be given in the next class till then study well practice more and stay tuned for more physics related information thank you